Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Uh, this is our first uh, Nexus worship service in quite some time, uh, over two years. Uh, but uh, the word says uh, how good and pleasant it is when we dwell together in unity. And as we dwell together and we sing, as, as we sing his praises together as a body of Christ in unity, um, let us make this uh, praise and this prayer um, sweet incense. May it, be, um, may it be sweet unto you, Lord. Um, so at this time, before we worship, before we lift up our voices, and as we um, listen to God's word, as his word is spoken to us, as we take in and as we absorb God's word, let us ask the Holy Spirit, let us ask the Holy Spirit to be in this place, to lead us into true worship in spirit and in truth. So at this time, I would like everyone to just take this time um, to prepare your hearts as we worship our God. as we sing forever we will cherish forever we will honor forever your your light will shine bright your beauty and your majesty lord uh, let us um, be reminded of your love let us forever cherish the promises that you have made in your word and in our lives father and at this time as we lift up our voices receive our praise and may you be glorified in jesus name we pray amen let's all rise from our seats Fairest Lord Jesus. Sunshine.
you for this time of worship, Lord. And as we come before you, and as our eyes are open, and as our ears are open, Lord Father, speak to us through your word, Father. Holy Spirit, lead this worship, lead this time of praise, Lord. We thank you. Speak to us once again, and let us not be just hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Father, lead us into worship. Father, speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 through 21. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 to 21. You can follow along with your Bible, or if you um, have the bulletin, you can refer to the bulletin. Let us now listen to the word of the Lord. Since then, we know what, is, what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than in what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live shall no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here at your house to worship you, to praise you, and to listen to your word. May this worship be pleasing to your ears. Come, fill this place with your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will open the mouth of your servant to proclaim the word in the power of the Spirit. Open up our hearts and minds to hear you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, for those of you that were a part of our 1030 joint service, you will know this is technically my second time preaching here at Yongnak, and especially here at IWE. But before that, I was preaching in front of a camera for about a year and a half due to the COVID situation. So you can probably tell I'm still getting back used to talking in front of people. You know, it's not quite natural for me to speak in front of people. And as I've been thinking about what to preach about these past two weeks. As some of you may know, we had to postpone a week. I kept thinking about the importance of, you know, a good beginning. You know, we today, as of right now, have officially resumed our 3.30 p.m. worship. And the question that kept bothering me, that kept nagging me was, what would be the right topic to talk about? You know, and what would be the right word to actually kind of describe our situation? What do I mean? I mean, yes, we have resumed or restarted our worship right now, which is why, you know, all of you are here today. But many of you will have noticed, especially for some of you old-timers, that things have changed a bit. You know, to begin with, we, as individuals, we've all changed the past two years, I'm pretty sure. For me, I gained quite a bit of weight. I don't know about you, but uh, it's definitely one place that you know, I've changed. But on a more spiritual note, my spiritual life has definitely taken a big toll. And I know this is true for many of us here today because I've had talks with you know, many people 
maybe not with all of you per se, but with fellow Christians. And we've come to, you know, similar thoughts and conclusions. So today, you also have me, the new guy, preaching, which is also a change because Pastor Justin used to be preaching at the theater service. So in some way, I think it's pretty safe to say that a lot actually has changed. This, and that's exactly why this question kept bothering me, because the word resume or restart means kind of a continuation. But is it really? You know, it got me thinking. And as I've had this thought the past two weeks, and I was looking through the Bible, the passage from 2 Corinthians, our text today, kind of came back to me. You know, the idea of a new creation. So today, I want to focus on this text and focus on three major points, specifically, that really speaks to our situation today. So number one is the fact that we must have fear of the Lord. You know, from the start of today's scripture passage, verse 11, we can see the phrase, the fear of the Lord. And it and I'll read it for us one more time. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. See, it tells us we should know what it is to fear the Lord. You know, this is a phrase we used to talk about when we're talking about the, the awe or the reverence that we have for the Lord. You know, it is a godly fear. It's not one of those fears that you have because you're scared. But it is a good fear. And this phrase is used actually quite frequently in the Old Testament. And the context in which these phrases are used is generally positive. Or, in fact, all my examples that I have and from what I know, they're all positive. So let's look at some of these. First, there's Job 28, 28. And it says, And he said to the human race, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. So in this first case, the fear of the Lord is referred to as wisdom. And then we can move over to Proverbs 1.7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And here we can see that it's the beginning of knowledge. Moving on to chapter 16 of the same book of Proverbs, it says, Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. So we can also see that evil is avoided through the fear of the Lord. And one last place that I want to look at, Psalm 19.9. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. Now, the NIV uses the word pure, but there are some other versions that will translate the word pure as clean. But another way to think about this is the fact that we need to be holy. You know, it is being holy. We are called to be holy also in Leviticus 11.44, where it says, I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves along the ground. So we must separate ourselves to be pure or morally blameless. And that is why we need the fear of the Lord. You know, the fear of the Lord is something that we must have because it is the right state of mind, but it is the right attitude that we need to have as Christians. And through this fear of the Lord, we gain wisdom, knowledge, we become pure, and it also helps us to avoid evil. So as we begin this new chapter in the story of our 3.30 p.m. worship, I think we need to reflect upon ourselves. Do I have the fear of the Lord? Do we as a community have the fear of the Lord as we restart this worship service? Now, we need to make this a priority to focus first individually ourselves to have the right heart and the right attitude. And it is quite appropriate that we're reminded of the most important part of the Christian life by Paul. Now we are reminded in the later verses here, of Christ, you know, his love and his death, you know, in the rest of these verses, they are all important, 
But today, I want to make the focus on something slightly else, which brings me to my second point for today. And that is that we must be a new creation. See, verse 17 is quite popular, quite well known, and many of you may have memorized this at, you know, vacation Bible school as a kid. I know I had to, especially if I wanted to eat lunch or dinner. Um, you know, and it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new, new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. See, we are quite familiar with the story of Jesus and the importance of being in Christ, which is why, as I mentioned, I want to focus on this second part of this first opening sentence, the new creation. See, after we have this right attitude, obviously we need to put things into action. You know, thoughts are great, but when we put it into action, it's better. And that begins with being a new creation. So we ourselves must first be a new creation, but this is something that also applies to the community. But let's look at ourselves first. Now, these past two plus years, I'm sure, have been crazy for most of us, if not all. And while there have been many epidemics and pandemics throughout history, COVID, I'm pretty sure, is the first epidemic and pandemic that we've all experienced. And when things happen for the first time, there's often a lot of confusion, often a lot of mistakes, and even panic. Now, we have gone through, and we are still going through it right now, and because of this virus, this worship service had, had been suspended, had been put on hold for two years. And today is the first time we have gathered together to worship together in such a long time. But frankly, at this point, at this juncture, we're at a new place. We're in new territory. Because no church or current church has previously experienced what we have gone through the past two years. When we look specifically here at the Korean context, churches are finally being able to open their doors again with the government, you know, loosening guidelines that have kept most of us online, you know, for the past two years. And this has led to interesting situations and reactions. Some people are quite happy, and I think that's most of us here because otherwise I don't think you would have been here today. But so there are some people who are kind of finding it annoying now to go back to church. Why is that? Because we have fallen prey to our human tendencies. We prefer being comfortable at home, and it's something that we've gotten used to. But as we begin our worship again, we have a new opportunity to focus on creating a new community. But it begins with us as individuals. Now think about how you feel when you're buying something new, whether it be, you know, the new iPhone, the new Samsung, you know, Gal Galaxy S22 that's out, maybe it's a, no, a new laptop. When, it's something, when something's new, it's nice, it's shiny, you know, you really look forward to it. We like new things. But as time goes on, what happens? Just wear and tear. The item gets scratched, you know, and eventually it loses some of its shininess. Eventually, we start to lose interest, and we care less and less for it. And I think many of us find ourselves in a similar situation in our lives. You know, over these past two years, it only makes sense that some of us will have lost our shininess, will have lost our desire, our interest for Christ. Because we've been stuck home, you know, at home, sitting in front of a TV or a cell phone. But the great news is that that is now all in the past, you know. And as we saw in verse 17, things of the past are of the past. You know, what matters is now that we are a new creation. We can build and create a community together. You know, we can recreate ourselves. We must polish ourselves so that we can be shiny again, you know, have that new look. And when we recreate ourselves, then our community can also be about creation. And that, this is where, for those of you that may have caught on, is how I came up with the title of my sermon, Recreation. 
And the thing about the title is, you may have noticed there's a colon after the first two letters, R-E, and these two letters mean something. For some of you, you may know what that is. But back in the older times, before I was born, um, they used to use this more often on written um, correspondence, written mail. And the R-E, it basically stood for regarding or in reference to, which comes from Latin. And as we shifted to electronic communication and email, it has more shifted towards um, being, a, being an abbreviation for the word reply, which is why when you click the reply button, the subject um, starts with R-E. But anyway, the key point that I want to make here is that with that, you know, is also why I titled the sermon of today, Recreation, is that we must make creating an important part of our service, of this community. We will need to recreate or create relationships again. You know, first, we need to recreate that relationship with Jesus. But then there's creating relationships with others here in this community, especially since we haven't had relationships in two years. And this process of creation won't be easy. And there will be times of difficulty. But at the same time, I can also guarantee that there'll be times of joy, love, and fun, which is why recreation can also be pronounced as recreation. They go hand in hand. And this brings me to the last point of today, the third point, which is the fact that we must be Christ's ambassadors. Now, this is from verse 20 of our passage today. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. You know, Paul reminds us here that we are ambassadors of God. And there's two short things from this statement that I want to focus on as we wrap up. Now, the first thing is the communal aspect. Notice that all three of my points today use we as the subject. Not only that, but if you look at today's scripture text, and if you will, for those of you that still have your Bibles open or have the bulletin in front of you, you now take a quick second to skim through the text. What do you notice? There's a lot of, the, there's a lot of a single word in there, and obviously that word is we. It gets used again and again all throughout today's passage. And as I was preparing for today's sermon, I also realized something interesting about our name, I, we. You know, international worship in English, it perfectly sums this all up. You know, we being the international worship in English, abbreviated as I, we, I may come first, but it also must be followed by we. You know, we are a part of it. We are part of a community, part of a group. So yes, our personal faith is important, but I cannot stress how much being a part of a Christian community is just as equally important. Which brings me to the second point that it's just the fact that we are ambassadors. Basically, what does it mean to be an ambassador? We are commissioned by Christ for the work of the universal church. Now, the role of ambassador is one with great responsibility. Because ambassadors go to another country and they live in another country with people who usually speak a different language. They have a different culture. You know, there's a, it's a different context. And that is exactly who we are as Christians. See, we may live in this physical world, so we take part in the life here and work in this world, but we are citizens of heaven. And in that respect, we are strangers here on earth. And that is why it is so difficult to live as a Christian by yourself. And it's the exact reason why we need a community. See, ambassadors, they also speak on behalf of their country. There will be times where we will have to speak on behalf of Jesus Christ as his followers. Now, it is not an easy task, which is why we must fear the Lord which will keep us on the right path. 
So may we fear the Lord as we create a community together as ambassadors of Christ. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to gather again for our 3.30 service. It has been a long time since we've had this opportunity. Help us to have the fear of the Lord and to break free from bad habits that may have formed. Give us the strength to be a new creation and to create new relationships with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ as we still strive to be your ambassadors in this world. All this we pray in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen.